now we'll go right over to Nora. Nora from Olgewald, who's a Sinologist. Hello, everybody. It's, it's really a pleasure to be invited here. Um, and um, Mehidi um, asked me to start with my first visit to, to Bangladesh, which was uh, back in 84, uh, when I uh, visited Bangladesh the first time. And I really have very good memories staying there at the Pulbari International Hotel. Uh, unfortunately, it was um, after Indira Gandhi um, was assassinated. <laughs> but I still keep very good memories on Bangladesh. And um, Mehidi and me, we both um, have been part of this uh, very nice conference we organized last year on China as a creditor, where we really tackled the question of Chinese loans, especially also to Bangladesh. And um, we um, discussed the upcoming new debt crisis, uh, global debt crisis, um, and especially the investments along the Belt and Road uh, initiatives um, from mainly as dear by China. So uh, we also asked the question how necessary to, how necessary it is for each country taking loans to develop its own national strategy, how to deal with China and Chinese loans, and especially if it's fitting in the national develop, development plan. So today I, it will be more a kind of roll call from my side, um, mainly tackling uh, the energy investments in uh, Bangladesh uh, embedded in the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, and in the end, I will say only two words on the new uh, National People's Congress, which, which ju just convened and just resumed last week. So Bangladesh is situated uh, in the middle of this BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative, so it has, um, is part of the Belt and Road, so part of the land and seaside economic corridor. Talking about economic corridors, these are uh, an important aspect of a uh, Chinese development model. The Bangladesh-China-India-Myanmar corridor is one of six corridors. Uh, and is um, always overshadowed by the conflict between India and China. This is why India wants to predate um, the BCIM corridor and always says it's based on the so-called Kunming initiative, which was established in 1999. Um, still, all these governments, India and Bangladesh uh, government, are very much interested in upholding cooperation. They just um, proclaimed last year in June, again, strong cooperation, especially, especially on the, in, the re in the fields of road connection, waterways, aviation, and also energy to enhance the regional competitiveness. I now just want to um, discuss very shortly this kind of narrative which is connected with Belt and Road, at, at which uh, China always advertise, advertises globally, um, and then come to the coal investments. Because the Belt and Road Initiative is, is, um, is a very clever term, or is referring to the modern Silk Road. Um, which is always associated with innovation, adventure, openness, and also the maritime silk road is referring to the ancient uh, ideal vision of trade, openness, um, and tries to trigger this imagination of a win-win silk road. Uh, so the official narrative is to create a new golden age of globalization and to create something like a kind of alternative um, globalization to the US dominated fossil fuel based globalization. So this vision um, uh, is highly questionable, I think, 
because that would first of all need to have need a rule of law environment in each of these countries to ensure the voices of the communities to be heard. Also, uh, for having a, a harmonious cooperation, it needs uh, to have a common reference system which is formed by all stakeholders, including local communities, based on free access to information. So what needs to be avoided are kind of white elephants, we are talking about that today, um, meaning indebtedness of um, the countries of Chinese investments, also finally leading to impoverishment of the people. What also needs to be avoided um, is destroying the planet by building coal power plants. And SGI, uh, the Global Environmental Institute and Service-Oriented NGO in China, um, stated or, or um, uh, published a study uh, shows that China is involved in 240 coal power pro projects along the Belt and Road. Um, China's own development is really based on coal. So for decades, China was investing in coal to uh, trigger their economic development. But at the same time, China is the biggest um, exporter of innovative, uh, of, um, of um, renewable energies. So what we see here on the right side uh, is the development of wind energy in, um, in China. Um, and also, this is a wind park in Xinjiang, which is simultaneously the same place where they will now build the biggest coal power plant in the world. So this is very contradictory um, <clears throat> policy. And what is China doing now in Bangladesh? I just skipped that. I hear there is some voice in the background. Um, is just exporting their development model. Um, we have to take China by their promise and also all the other countries by their promise because uh, in 2017 in May, there was the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation. And there, 29 head of states signed an agreement that they will uh, engaged in the Belt and Road um, according to the Paris Alignment. Bangladesh, we can see here on this map, is on position seven uh, for Chinese built projects, Chinese coal fire, uh, coal fired power uh, projects, um, and Indonesia even is on position two. All this is because um what is offered by china is simply the cheapest available source of power and that's why it is chosen um just recently there was a study um by a e e r on the china uh, coal investments in indonesia um and this study also shows that the low quality of these plans caused wasteful investment in the coal sector, uh, which failed also to produce the expected amount of electricity. Um, this is a slide from Mehidi, which shows that uh, of all coal power plants which are planned in, in Bangladesh, 13 are financed by China. Um, a few days ago, we published a press release um, because the National People's Congress uh, just convened in Beijing, uh, which will start to discuss the next five-year plan of China, which will have very yeah, major implications on climate change. Urgewald's uh, research just found that six, 26 projects which are developed 
in Bangladesh in the uh, framework of the coal power plants are developed with Chinese utilities and engineering companies. Among them is the Pyra Hub uh, project in Bangladesh, uh, situated in the Sundarbans. Um, once operational, the hub and the connected port will be used to import 20 million metric tons of coal each year. So the hub will supply at least four power plants which imported coal from Indonesia. Uh, Chinese engineering companies are involved in the construction in all of them. And the power plants are all co-owned by the Chinese government. So this is where we have to direct our requests. The construction of the Pyra port and the resulting traffic uh, will destroy large parts of the Sundarbans. China has pumped more money into Bangladesh than any other country over the past couple of years. China saw, uh, uh, Bangladesh saw a record of inflow in FDI in 2018. Uh, what, uh, what is the name? Monover talked about that already. Um, and out of the $3.6 billion uh, FDI, one third um, is given by China. What is even worse is that it's planned to import hydropower to Bangladesh um, because it's even cheaper. Um, so just uh, my last words on the NPC just resumed in China. Uh, the NPC announced that uh, the debt policy um, an important pillar of the Chinese national uh, economy. And China will start to discuss bilaterally about arrangements of debt restructuring and cancellation. And one important other uh, outcome is um, that the Belt and Road Initiative should be more beneficial for all the partner countries. So we have to press also our European governments to uh, put much more pressure on, uh, on China and the collaboration um, to uh, hold China by its promises. So I will stop here.